Imagine you're putting together a new band and you're recruiting the best musicians. You just landed a premier guitarist and now you're wondering if it'll be enough. Do you need a second guitarist, a third? In this episode, we're going to examine the various factors that influence this decision, along with relevant examples of successful classic rock bands. We're sure you'll have your own thoughts based on your own experiences, so please drop them in the comments. Let's get started. First, let's acknowledge that rock bands have carved out successful, even historic careers with a wide range of lineups. So there seems to be no one-size-fits-all magical answer to the question of how many guitarists a band needs. The traditional core seems to be a four-piece band, including a lead singer and a lead guitarist, playing over a rhythm section made up of a bass player and a drummer. This was popularized by iconic bands like The Who, Led Zeppelin, The Doors, Queen, Metallica, and Van Halen, among many others. However, many top acts added a second guitarist, usually to play rhythm guitar behind the lead guitarist, but sometimes as a second lead. These included The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, Aerosmith, ACDC, Styx, The Knack, Dire Straits, Kiss, Creedence Clearwater Revival, The Kinks, and The Beach Boys. Others didn't stop there and added a third guitarist, usually as a second lead guitarist. These larger bands included The Eagles, Leonard Skynerd, The Allman Brothers, and Molly Hatchett. At the other end of the spectrum were the trios, where one of the members of a four-piece band took on double duty as lead singer. This could be the drummer, like Phil Collins of Genesis, the bass player, like Geddy Lee of Rush or Jack Bruce of Cream, or the guitarist, like Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top, or Jimi Hendrix of, naturally, the Jimi Hendrix Experience. As a side note, we should also remember that some single guitarist bands supplemented their sound with a keyboard player instead of a second guitarist. These included Fleetwood Mac, Journey, Deep Purple, Toto, and Yes. Okay, so much for the history lesson. Let's get back to the question at hand and some of the factors to consider when making this decision. Sorry for the interruption, but we're excited to announce that we now have a relationship with Guitar Center, one of the largest musical instrument retailers in the U.S. If you'd like to financially support our channel, then please use our special link in the description below to make your next musical instrument purchase from Guitar Center's online store. We'll give you more details at the end of this video. Now, back to the show. First and foremost, what are your band's goals? Is this going to be a garage band, a cover band, playing weddings and parties, a YouTube band, a touring band? Do you plan to write, record, and publish original music? What kind of music do you want to play? Which classic bands will provide your inspiration? While these questions may not necessarily help you decide whether to add another guitarist or two, they will give you a sense for what type of people to recruit, or even how many people to recruit. After all, you have to keep in mind that every person you add to the band is not just one more potential creative contributor, but also one more potential rift in the band. Sadly, we can't ignore the rich history of rock bands torn apart by interpersonal strife. This may seem obvious, but deciding whether to add additional guitarists may depend largely on your first guitarist. After all, if he is as good as Eddie Van Halen or Eric Clapton, then you may be set already. However, there may be other factors at play. For example, when they formed ACDC, Malcolm and Angus Young wanted to continue playing together because of their chemistry as brothers. Ditto for Mark and David Knopfler of Dire Straits, John and Tom Fogarty of CCR, and Ray and Dave Davies of The Kinks. Also, when they formed The Eagles, Don Henley and Glenn Frey brought on Bernie Leadon to play lead over Frey's rhythm and vocals. Later, they recruited Don Felder as a third guitarist, primarily to add a hard rock edge to complement Leadon's country sound. The bottom line is that your first step may be to honestly assess your first guitarist and to speak with him about what he thinks the band will need to achieve its goals. While you may start by assessing your first guitarist, you also have to assess the rest of the band. After all, playing with a single guitarist puts a lot of pressure on your other musicians, in most cases, especially the bass player. 
You can't listen to classic rock tunes without recalling the interplay between Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones, or Eddie Van Halen and Michael Anthony, or Brian May and John Deacon, or Alex Lifeson and Geddy Lee, or Lindsey Buckingham and John McVie. The list goes on and on. Pete Townsend once famously said, the only reason I was able to do what I did on guitar was because John Entwistle was able to do what he did on bass. We're paraphrasing, but the core sentiment remains. If your band is going to focus on covers, then you may want a second guitarist or even a rotating stable of guitarists since you will have to be prepared for any possible sound in your set list. However, if your goal is to write original music, then you're back to assessing your first guitarist and the rest of the band. After all, it's a tall order to ask a single person to develop all of the iconic riffs, rhythms, and solos that your band will ever need. Obviously, it's not impossible, but it's definitely a difficult burden. Steve Lukather was a rare machine, writing and playing on hundreds of songs and dozens of iconic hits for his band Toto, and for so many other famous bands and artists. The same could be said in spades for Prince. Then again, many lead guitarists thrive on the chemistry with their rhythm guitarists. ACDC was well known for their hard-driving rhythmic riffs, most of which were actually written by Malcolm Young, while Angus played the lead solos. Also, Steve Perry of Aerosmith relied on Brad Whitford for creative support, and the same for Keith Richards and Ron Wood of the Rolling Stones, and Tom Schultz and Barry Goudreau of Boston. Likewise, James Young and Tommy Shaw took turns writing tunes for Styx, and Leonard Skeenard had a trio of guitarist songwriters in Steve Gaines, Alan Collins, and Gary Rossington. With today's technology, it's possible for your band to create incredibly rich musical sounds, even with a stripped down lineup. Heck, YouTube is even filled with videos from some amazing multi-instrumentalists playing as one-person bands. However, if your band's goals include live performances, then you'll have to think about what kind of sound you want to bring for your audiences. Do you want a tight, clean sound or rich, multi-layered textures? Also, do you want to add touring musicians or a backing band to supplement your core band, or do you want it to be just about you and your mates? And these may be questions that you don't need to consider until later, but you might as well discuss them with your first guitarist even during the initial forming of your band. So, what's the answer? How many guitarists does a rock band need to be successful? What other factors should you consider when making this decision for your own band? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop them in the comments. And of course, please remember to hit the like, subscribe, and notify buttons. We'll see you again soon. As we already mentioned, our channel now has an official relationship with Guitar Center, one of the largest musical instrument retailers in the U.S. If you're in the market for a new instrument, then Guitar Center is the place for you to find a wide selection and discover great deals. They offer new, used, and vintage guitars, including bass, acoustic, and electric guitars from Gibson, Fender, Ibanez, Epiphone, Martin, and so many others. You can also get strings, picks, amps, effects pedals, and other accessories. Series. Despite their name, they also offer drums and keyboards, as well as recording and DJ equipment. In other words, there's something for everyone. If you want to financially support our channel, then please use our special link in the description below to make your next purchase from Guitar Center's online store. It's a win-win for all of us.